It's Friday, May 29th, 2020. I'm Pastor Jeff Gramza. Thanks for joining me today. May 29th. Who would have ever imagined? Mid-March, as this pandemic began, my wife suggested that I do these daily devotionals. To my horror, the church board here affirmed my wife, and, uh, and this journey began. It's been a labor of love for me. It's been challenging because just as with our online worship, it, it feels like I'm sharing this with nobody. And yet, from the responses, I know that there are people who, who have been touched by these. For some of you, this devotional has been a part of your uh, daily journey through this pandemic. Quite honestly, I am amazed each Sunday that the Holy Spirit is able to deliver something through me. I never imagined that uh, I could share even a few words daily that would have any meaning for people. Um, it's been meaningful to me, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to share with you. I've done over 50 of these daily video devotionals, and I've decided that as, as our community, as our nation begins to emerge, I've made the decision that for now, this is the last one. We'll have to look forward. Uh, these may happen um, maybe once a week or twice a week or something. I don't know um, how the Spirit will, will move me or the church as we move forward, but I thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to enter into your lives, and, and I pray in some way maybe blessing your lives. This Sunday, May 31st, is the Sunday of Pentecost. It's the Sunday when we celebrate Jesus inspiring us and the church with the Holy Spirit United Methodist Bishop uh, William Williman has a, I find it a bit humorous, uh, take on church design. He says that, that we build our churches as incredibly strong brick and mortar structures. We bolt our pews to the ground. We create our altars and our pulpits so that they're so large that they cannot be moved easily. We've created all sorts of rules about how worship happens. We print out our services so it's there in black and white. This is what it is. We're not changing. Woman suggests that we do all of this because we as a Christian church have this collective memory of Pentecost. We know that God is on the move. We know that the Holy Spirit continues to blow through the church and our lives each and every day. And quite frankly, it scares us because we know that God is never content 
with the status quo. We know that God is always calling us to dream new dreams, to discover new ways of being the church, new ways of being family. God is, is always calling on us to reach out more, to love more, to share more of who we are, of what we have, of who God is, and to share all the ways that God blesses us. This pandemic, it's shaken the church. It's shaken pastors. Church, churches in Europe that did not stop in-person worship for the plague or for the Spanish flu, for the first time in hundreds of years, closed their doors to in-person worship. We as a church were forced to discover new ways of making the love of Christ known, new ways of providing worship opportunities, new ways of being the hands and the feet of Christ in the world. The doors to the church may have closed, but we know that closed and locked doors have never stopped the work of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit has continued to blow through the church and through our lives. Forcing us to dream new dreams. Forcing us to imagine new ways of being church. As we emerge from this one of the questions that the church is already beginning to ask is, what has God done that we can't let go of? What are the new things that have happened over the last couple of months that have been powerful and beneficial for the church today and for the future of the church? Those are questions for the church and for pastors to wrestle with. But I think this is a good question for individuals and for families to ask as well. This pandemic has been terrible. People have become very sick. Many people have died. The, the economic toll, I don't think we appreciate. Um, the, the, the spiritual, the psychological, the emotional, uh, we're not going to discover how bad this virus has been uh, for months or years yet to come. But I think it's important for us as individuals and families to look at how the Holy Spirit has invaded our homes, coming through those locked doors, as that Spirit will do. What are the things that have happened for you and for your family that have been beneficial? What blessings has God brought you in the midst of all of this? 
What are those things that you need to hold on to? Even as, as, as our human drive for normalcy will, will drive us to, to get back to the way we used to live as much as possible. What are those things that you shouldn't be going back to? What are the things about this pandemic that have brought you closer together with one another, that have brought you closer to God? Talk about those blessings with one another. Talk about those blessings with God. Thank God for that spirit, that relentless spirit that is scary, that continues to blow, that will not give up on us. Give thanks for that spirit that brings renewed life and love every single day. Let me pray with you. Come, Holy Spirit. As we prepare for the festival of Pentecost, come, Holy Spirit, into the dark places of our lives, into the, the fears that we still hold on to, into the illnesses, into the brokenness, into the separation. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for sustaining us this far in this pandemic. Continue to inspire us and to guide us. To con continue to, to push us out of normalcy, of the status quo, of our comfort, that we might discover new ways of being church, new ways of being your children, new ways of reaching out and loving one another. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me on this journey. It's not always been difficult. I'm thankful that you have given me the opportunity to, to share my struggles and even my darkness through this time of pandemic. As we continue to move forward, please never forget that God loves you and that I love you and that we're going to continue to move through this together. God bless you.